Hallelujah. 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 She don't need to get up. Stay right there. Ha ha. Woohoo. Ha ha ha. Ha ha ha. Ha ha ha. Ha ha ha. to God. Some things being broken this morning in the name of Jesus. Woo. Doors being opened this morning in the name of Woo. Bodies being made whole in this place in the name of Woo. Ha ha. Setting the captives free this morning in the name of Hey! In the name of Jesus. They call the name. Say Jesus. Woo. Gone already. Okay. Praise him. Ha, ha, ha. Woo-hoo. 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 Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. We love you, Jesus. Woo! Glory, glory, glory. Glory, glory, glory. The name of Jesus. It is higher than any other name. The name of Jesus. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Woo! Hallelujah. We just thank you, Lord, and we bless your name. We magnify and exalt you, Lord God. Father, right now, in the name of Jesus, I yield myself totally and completely in, unto you, Lord God. Woo! 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 Hey, ha ha. I yield myself totally and completely to you, Lord God. Have your way in this place like never before, Lord God. I thank you, Lord. My mouth is hooked up to my spirit and my spirit is hooked up to your mouth, Lord God. Hallelujah. I thank you, Lord God. Utterance is given unto me that I can boldly declare the mysteries of the gospel. I thank you right now, Lord God, for miracles, signs, and wonders manifesting in this house like never before. That Hallelujah. I thank you, Lord. And I praise you, Lord God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory. I release my faith. Prayer, and I kind of yeah, 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 yeah. In the name, in the name, Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. Oh, glory to God! Glory to God! Glory to God! Just for anybody that came in late, I am not Pastor Walker. Glory to God. He's away um, taking his daughter, promise, to school. Glory to God. Amen. Hallelujah. But he's making his way back. Glory to God. Be back in the pool pit next week, Wednesday and Sunday. So if you're a visitor and you came in after our little um, visitor's uh, welcome thing, we invite you back next week. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Oh, glory. Glory. Hallelujah. So much power in the name of Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. 
want you to open your Bibles to the book of Matthew chapter 1. Hallelujah. The name of Jesus, higher than any other name. That's what I'm talking about today. The name of Jesus. Woo. Hallelujah. I just love when the choir do what they do. They just sing and lift up the name, exalt the name. They flow in the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. I thank the Lord for that. Hallelujah. We're talking about the name of Jesus. Woo. Been meditating on this message all week long. Glory to God. There is so much power and authority in that name. I'm telling you. Glory to God. And we have to understand and recognize who we have on our side. Who we have living on the inside of us. And his name is Jesus. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's look at Matthew chapter 1, verse number 18, and it says this. Now the birth of Jesus Christ was on this wise. When as his... When as his mother Mary was espoused to Joseph, before they came together, she was found with a child of the Holy Ghost. Joseph, her husband, being a just man and not willing to make her a public example, was minded to put her away privily. But while he thought on these things, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a dream, saying, Joseph, thou son of David, fear not to take unto thee, take unto thee Mary thy wife. For that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost. Verse number 21 says, And she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. Glory to God. That name Jesus in the Hebrew means Jehovah is our salvation. That means he is our deliverer. He is our healer. He is our way out of no way. He is our protector. Glory to God. Jesus, all that is encompassed in his name. He is your, your peace. He is your love. He is a faithful one. He is the internal God. Hallelujah. He's the one that he'd stick it closer than a brother. His name is Jesus. So they brought forth a son. Son had a 33, uh, he uh, walked on the earth for 33 years, had a three and a half year ministry, had a three year ministry. And during his ministry on earth, what did Jesus do? Calm the storm, fed 5,000, walked on water, uh, withered the fig tree. Uh, 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 um, turned water into wine uh, he healed the sick Peter's mother and other sick people woman with the issue of blood he healed the blind eyes he made uh, uh, deaf ears hear he caused the dead to be raised glory to God Lazarus and the widow's son so we see in the life of Jesus he did mighty miracles glory to God that glorified the father but he didn't stay here he had to go glory to God and the Bible lets us know that he was crucified. According to Isaiah, it tells us that he was wounded for our transgression and he was bruised for our iniquities. And then it says the chastisement of our peace was upon him. Then it says with every stripe, we are healed. So we know that Jesus went to the cross for us. Not only did he go to the cross, Lord God, he died and the Bible lets us know he was buried and he rose again with all power in his hand. That's who we're talking about this morning. We're talking about Jesus. Glory to God. See, other people, they serve dead gods. They serve Buddha, uh, uh, Holly Selassie, and all, all these other people, glory to God, that didn't even have power to raise themselves up. But the God that we serve, he is alive and well. He's seated on the throne at the right hand of the Father forevermore. Hallelujah. And the Bible tells us that he's ever making intercession for us. Glory to God. Always standing for in the gap for us. Always pleading our case. Glory to God. Who are we talking about? Jesus. In Mark, Mark chapter 16, verse number 17. Go there with me. Jesus. Mighty miracles he wrought. Jesus. Healings. Raising the dead. Casting out devils. Jesus. Woo. Hallelujah. Glory to God. She running in faith. I'm telling you. She running in faith. She is running in faith. Glory to God. Our church is a little different. Hallelujah. We don't sit in our chairs. When God deal with us, we get up and do what he tell us to do. So if he tell you to run, feel free to run. Tell you to jump, feel free to jump. Tell you to tell you, shout, feel free to shout. Glory to God. Hallelujah, hallelujah, 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There's a wave of the spirit running through here. Glory to God like never before. They asked for the rain. We sang for the rain. Glory to God. We said, let it rain. Let it rain. Let it rain. Come on now. Let it rain. Let it rain. Let it rain. See, you can sit in here and not know that the Holy Spirit is moving, glory to God, up and down the aisles, glory to God. You can sit like a statue like Buddha and not do anything, hallelujah. But there are those that are sensitive to the moving and promptings of the Spirit, and they know when to wait. when the wave of God is flowing through this place hallelujah and they can't contain themselves hallelujah hey we ask for the rain let it rain glory to God glory to God glory to God when Jesus is in the room he can do whatever he wants to Glory to God. God knows exactly what you need. He knows what's going on in your household. He knows what's going on in your marriage. He knows what's going on in your bank account. He knows what's going on on the inside of you. Come on, somebody. And God, he is the one that will meet you at your point of need while you are sitting in this place. Glory to God. Come here, come here, come here. Come here. Glory. 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 He wants to deliver. He wants to heal. He wants to set free. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. He goes deep. He goes deep. He goes deep. Receive this. Receive this. Right now. Whoa. How am I called? She. And the thing about him, he go deep. You know how we deal with stuff on the surface? You know, like, I forgive you, but deep down inside, your heart be rumbling like, boy, you better not say nothing else to me. Yes. Now, I done said I forgive, but deep down on the inside, you still hurting. You still broken. He knows that. The Bible says that we don't have a high priest that has not been touched with the feelings of our infirmity, but was all points tempted as we are, yet without sin. So he knows. Somebody in here been asking God, God. Don't you understand? Yeah, he understands. And he knows what you're going through. Glory to God. And he's not. Hey. Right. He knows. He knows. He knows what's going on on the inside. And see, he don't deal just right where you are right now. In your 20s, your 30s and stuff. But he'll go way back to when you was a little child. Because he knows what he has to get out of you. What he needs to deliver you from. What he needs to bring out of you. So you can move into the purpose and the destiny that he has for your life. He knows. He knows. He knows. And he hears you. That was your main concern. Did he hear you? He hears you. When you pray, receive this now in the name of Jesus. Take it now. He knows. He knows. He cares. He cares about you. Cares about you. Cares about your life. Cares where you're going. Glory to God. And he's already made provision for you when you get there. Glory to God. Lift your hands. Pastor, I know y'all already laid hands on you, but I want to put my hands on you too because I know you leave it out tomorrow. Glory to God. I want you to receive this now in the name of Jesus. You are right now, according to the word, a mighty man of God. Yes. Thank you. Jesus. Right now. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Yep, he knows those, those, those intimate details, the things that you don't tell mama or daddy or anybody else. 
He know all that stuff, the stuff that you have hidden and compartmentalized that you won't let nobody else in. I don't care what they say to you. I don't care how close they are to you. You won't let nobody in. That's what he is aiming for this morning. That's where he is going this morning. Glory to God. Some of that's been blocking you and hindering you from what he wants you to do in your life. Glory to God. Oh, glory. Glory to God. Glory to God. Let's go to Mark the 16 and 17. Mark chapter 16. No, Jesus went away. We know Jesus did mighty miracles. Then he went away. Sent a comforter for, comforter for it with us. To be with us alongside us just like him. Mark 16, 17 says this. And these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name. In the name of Jesus. Shall they cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. They shall take up serpents, and if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. Jesus changed this world forever, you know. He changed it forever. Because, see, the devil, when Jesus was on earth, he only had one person to deal with. Now, everybody that has called on the name of Jesus has been made, become a Christian or a born-again believer. So, where the, where the devil only had one issue at, at one time. Now he got millions, millions of people, different tongues and languages that call on the name. He, God got them stationed throughout the world. That who, the devil only had one issue. Jesus could only be in one place at one time. We filled with the Holy Ghost. God on the inside of us everywhere we go he is so everywhere we go we can be agents of change throughout the entire world you hear me so he got people just like us in China he got people just like us in Asia he got people just like us in Africa he got people just like us in Japan he got people just like us Antigua Dominica Anguilla St. Kitts Nevis come on somebody now Jesus' ministry can have a maximum impact throughout the entire world. So you are a threat to the kingdom of darkness because you call on the name that is above every name. The name of Somebody better recognize this morning, glory to God. Woo. By the authority in the name of Jesus, it causes diseases to part from bodies. By the authority in the name of Jesus, people are physically healed, mentally delivered, mentally set free, glory to God. By the power in the name of Jesus. People are saved, filled with the Holy Ghost in the name of Jesus. Y'all hear me this morning. That name is powerful. That name is powerful. That name is powerful. powerful. Glory to God. That name is powerful, glory to God. See, back, 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 back in the day, like in the Old Testament, they didn't have the name that we had named. You know, they would go and when, they, when, when God would do something to them, they would build an altar and they would worship him. They would call him Elohim. They would call him Jehovah Shalom. They would call him Jehovah Jireh. But they would never say the name. They call him El Shaddai, uh, Joshua the Rock. They would call him all these names. But Jesus said this in uh, John chapter 16, verse 24. Let's go there. Woo. Hey. Oh my God. Maximum impact. Because he lives in me and he lives in you. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Things are changing while you're sitting in here. Glory to God. 
Nope, you ain't going to leave here the same way you came because you're going to have an encounter with the almighty God. Hallelujah. Some people need to just open their hearts up to God. It's not about the vessel. It's about you having your heart open to what God wants to do to you in this place this morning. Ooh. Hallelujah. John 16, 24 says this. Hitherto, this is Jesus speaking. Have ye asked nothing in my name? Ask that you shall receive that your joy may be full. So Jesus said, now before they, they, they wouldn't say the name. They, they would call him a Hashem, the name. But they wouldn't say the name. Now God has given us the name, the name of Jesus. And we can call on the name. And he's given us delegated authority to use the name. We got the legal right to call on the name. Turn to um, Matthew chapter 28. Glory to God. Ooh. You got legal authority to use his name. The legal right to call on his name. That no matter what's going on in your life, all you got to say is Jesus. I remember when I was Michi in Michigan, I was driving down Telegraph Road on my way to work. And it was an ice storm um, that morning. But ice and snow in Michigan is the norm. So you don't just stay home. Oh, I got a Chicago man right here. Okay, he know what I'm talking about. You don't stay home. You don't do none of that. You just keep it moving. Okay, so I was keeping it moving. So driving down Telegraph Road on my way to work. And somebody suddenly stopped in front of me. And I tried to slam on brakes behind him. Bad thing to do. My car went in a spin like never before. I had Kenneth in the back seat, I'm in the front seat, and everything. And me, because I was so caught up in the morning, I took my hands off the wheel. So the car just doing what it wanted to do. Come on, somebody. But I remembered the name. I called on the name of it, because you can get caught up, your emotions get caught up in the morning, because the car just spinning and spinning, and I'm like, ah! And the car going and going, and people trying to stop, because everybody's sliding. I called on the name of Jesus. The car spins again and ends up right on the curb. Stop the car. All the traffic that should have hit me. Come on. Because it was patches of ice. They called it black ice. And when you hit the black ice, your car just jet propels. Come on, somebody. All the cars that should have hit my car. I should have been somewhere, some, doing something other than being here. But God, when I called on the name. My car spin, went right into the curb. Done deal. I, by the time I caught myself, I looked back, it was like time had stopped. Everybody's car was like literally lined up. My car was going this way. Everybody else was coming this way. And I had to take a moment and give God some praise for that. Glory to God. He said he would deliver us. He said he would heal us. Come on, somebody. Didn't he say if you dwell in the secret place of the most high, you will abide under the shadow of the almighty God? You can say of the Lord, he is your refuge. He is your fortress. He is your God. God, I trust you. Hey. Hey. We sang it this morning. We don't have to be afraid of the arrow by night, nor the terror by day. Come on, somebody. Because we got who? Jesus. I was coming back from Puerto Rico. It was this lady was on Delta. It was a gentleman on the end. This lady sitting next to me, and I was at the window seat. So I was like literally tired. So I um, had my head up against the window. But um, they, they, you know how they let you know we about to get into some turbulence and stuff like that. So um, not bother me. Because Jesus calms the storm. So I'm up there with my head on my little pillow up against the window and everything. And the plane takes a good dip. The lady next to me grabs my hand and everything. And she said, uh, and she apologized because she said, well, normally I fly with my son. And when something like this happens, I call on, I call on his name. I hold his hand and I call on his name. I said, boo, ain't no need to call on his name. When you are in trouble, when situation, when things are coming up against you, I ain't got time to say, Emmanuel. I'm talking about, <laughs> give me a Spanish name. Jesus. Jesus. What, what, what's another name? Don. Tom. Jean-Pierre. I ain't got time for none of that. I got 
got to call on the name that works. And I show you the name didn't work because she holding on to my hand. I'm flesh and blood just like you. But I know this. I got power on the inside. So I say, boo, don't grab on your son. Call on the name of Jesus. Woo, glory. Glory to God. I told y'all to go to Matthew 28. I didn't read this, right? Okay. Because we got delegated authority to use this name. We can use this name at any time, any place, anywhere, day or night. Because we got the name, the name of Jesus. Glory to God. And it says this in Matthew 28, 18. It says, Jesus approached you. What did that say? Okay. Oh, I was, I was supposed to read it from the Amplified. Y'all ain't had to Amplify. I say, Jesus approached you. That ain't what my book say. They done changed the Bible. Okay. Glory to God. Oh, they say, just read. Okay, read. I'm going to read, y'all. Read. That's what they used to say in my old church. They would have one designated reader, and they say, read the pastor. Say something. He say, read. And the person... So I better read. Okay. Matthew 28, 18 says, Jesus came up and said to them, all authority, all power, absolute rule in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go, therefore, make disciples of all nations. Help the people to learn of me, believe in me, obey my words. Y'all hear that's our assignment in the earth. To help the people to learn of him, believe in him, and to obey his word. Baptize them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Teaching them to observe everything that I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always. Remaining with you perpetually, regardless of circumstances. And on every occasion, even to the end of the world. So Jesus said, guess what? I, I have authority in uh, uh, three worlds. I got authority in heaven, earth, and hell. Yeah. We got people still afraid of the devil, you know. When I went to Grenada, I say, do y'all know about the, um, see, what is that word I told you this morning? Oh, he only, he supposed to help me. Oh, I forgot, I'm the help me. Okay. Okay. Anyway, keep it moving. Oh, bear, that's the name. So when I was ministering, I was talking about Jesus too. I said, y'all heard of the word obey? They said, that's not how we say it. We say, obey. I said, now them people in St. Thomas told me it was obey. Now I done get to Grenada, y'all say it's obey. Whatever they call. I said, you got people afraid of them. If they get a piece of my hair, what they might do, they like candles around me and all. What kind of thing is that? The Bible lets us know, according to the book of Colossians, that Jesus spoiled principalities and powers and made a show of them openly. And then it says he triumphed over them. Now, back in the day, I used to be a brawler. I don't look like a brawler, but I used to be a brawler. And we had this thing in Detroit. When you get ready to fight, y'all used to do that too, okay? <laughs> Got some brawlers on this side. I'm going this side with it. These all, not, nobody over here, they, they just sitting here like, I ain't never did nothing. <laughs> we just had a thing, you know, when you get ready to brawl, you put the stick on their shoulder. Y'all used to do that too. Okay, see, that the bra I told you that side got the brawlers on. Put the stick on the person's shoulder. Put it on your shoulder and you knock. And look at Yvonne talking to him, yeah, yeah. And you dare them to knock that stick off. Because while they focus on that stick, you about to lay something on them. So I sprawled some principalities in power back on Six Mile in Detroit, Michigan. At John L. King Elementary School. Could nobody tell me that they was going to beat me up and I didn't wait for them. We going to get you after school. Not a problem. And then, you know, we used to get the, we used to get the Vaseline.
You gotta put the Vaseline. You know about that putting that Vaseline on. I don't know why we put that Vaseline on. What was that thing about? So they hand a slide. Okay. I don't know. You had to have Vaseline in your bag. You gotta be ready to brawl. They be like, we gonna get you at school. It could be dog, cat, monkey, man, girl, boy. It didn't matter to me. Group or whatever. I was standing my ground. I was not going to move. And I thought I was bad. But once I got exposed to the word, I see who really got it going on. Now, I got some licks. There were some times I did get some licks. And then I had a little bully issue. I would kind of bully folks and stuff. And one day I got set up. When I went to chase the people, they had a group of people waiting for me. That's when I got delivered. about seven of them mugs waiting for me over that corner. They set me up. They said, come. I went right. I was going high. Woof, woof, woof. I come about to get them. Boy, I saw that girl had about seven boys lined up. I said, I might be able to get one. I, right then, I was like, now I am totally delivered. I ain't fight. I don't think I follow any more after that. I had a lot of word issues. Had a lot of word battle, battle. But the fist, I had to put them down. But the Bible says that Jesus, he spoiled principalities and powers and made a show of them openly triumphing over them. Go to Ephesians chapter 1. Love reading about Jesus. Hallelujah. I didn't get this to them. I get them people up there. Hard time I had to buy them dinner or something. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Woo-hoo-hoo. Look at verse number 19. Go to 19 for me. Ephesians 1 19. Oh, start at 18. Okay, would you just start? Okay, um, the eyes of your understanding being enlightened, verse number 18, that you, that, um, the King James Version, that you may know what is the hope of your calling and what the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints and what's the exceeding greatness of his power towards us who believe according to the working of his mighty power, which he wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead and set him at his own right hand in heavenly places far above all. What's left after all? Far above all principality and power and every name that is named. Every name that is named. Not only in this world, but also in that which is to come. And then it says, it has placed all things under his feet and gave him to be the head over all things to the church, which is his body, the fullness of him that filleth all in all. Let's go to Philippians chapter 2. Didn't give him this one either, but work with me. Philippians chapter 2 verse 9 says this, wherefore God also have highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name, that at the name of every knee shall bow of things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth and every tongue shall confess that Jesus is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Y'all hearing me this morning? So Jesus got all authority. If he got all authority, guess what? We got all authority and all power and you ain't got to be afraid of Obear or the OBA and all them other names. Glory to God. You can walk in your kingdom authority knowing that God is with you. He is in you. He got you. got all of heaven's resources available unto you glory to God oh glory hallelujah hallelujah these signs shall follow them that believe these signs shall follow them that believe in my name you got authority in my name he has given you authority in my name the name of Jesus you got authority in this earth Check this. I wrote this. Jesus has given us a sign check on the resources of heaven. And he is literally asking us to fill it in. He is asking you to fill it in. That's just like you. If you know you got $1,000 in the bank, when you have to write a check for $500, you ain't even concerned because you know you got it covered. Jesus got you covered. Come on, somebody. He got you covered. So you got the legal right to use his name against the enemy. You got the legal right to use his name in your petitions. You got the legal right to use his name in your prayers. You got the legal right to use his name in your praise. You got the legal right to use his name in your worship. He has given you the legal right to use the name. Glory to God. Let's go to 1 John 4, 17. Hallelujah. It's the name of Jesus. 
higher than any other name. Oh, how sweet the name of Jesus is. Hallelujah. Glory to God. There is power in the name of Jesus to break every chain. Glory to God. Hallelujah. First John 4, 17 talks about this. Herein is our love made perfect that we have, may have boldness in the day of judgment because as he is, so are we in this world. As he is, so are we in this world. So guess what? We need to wake up to the reality of who we really are, who we have living on the inside of us, and the power and authority that we are supposed to walk in. There is revival in the air. I know everybody can't feel it. I know everybody can't sense it. But there is revival in the air. And what God is about to do, a church building will not be able to contain. The people that will be coming in from the north and coming in from the south. Because there is a stirring in the spirit. Glory to God. Are you hearing me this morning? There's a stirring in the realm of the spirit. And I'm telling you. I'm telling you, because God got people throughout the earth sharing his word, demonstrating his power. That's going to bring in the lost. That's going to bring in the broken. That's going to bring in the depressed. That's going to bring in the discouraged. That, hello, come on, somebody. The enemy has to let them go in the name of Jesus. Right now, we command blinders to be removed from their eyes. That they'll be able to see the glorious light of the gospel of Jesus Christ. That's the season that we're living in, glory to God. Blinders off our family members. Blinders off our children. Blinders off our co-workers. Blinders, glory to God, off our neighbors. Blinders off our mothers and fathers. Hallelujah. So they can see the light. I remember I was believing God, my mother, to come to the Lord. And it's like when we would go to church, she would come to church with me. I would try to sit like in the first couple of rows, making it easy for her. You know, like if she won't give her life to Jesus, two steps, bam, you at the altar. So I would always try to position us. I mean, I'll, come on, mom, come on, come on, we going, we going. Get there, trying to run in, come on, mom, come on. So we could sit in, trying to do things my way. One night, we were at service at the Redford Church. Redford Church had a balcony in it, and there was so many people there, we had to go up in the balcony. So in my heart, I'm like, okay, whatever. You know, I know she ain't going to do none of this. So next time, because I got my plan set. Because I want, who don't want their family members to come to the Lord? So me, not relying on God, I was doing it on my, in my own might, my own strength, my own ability. But God showed himself strong. R.W. Shambach was ministering that night. And R.W. Shambach was preaching about Jesus. And I'm telling you. He told us to bow our heads and everything. Our heads are bowed. And I just sent somebody stand up next to me. And in my mind, I said, that couldn't be my mama. Because we way up in the balcony. And to get from the balcony, you got to go up the steps, walk down the hallway, go down the step, come through the corridor, and walk the whole length of the sanctuary to get to the altar. Mama ain't going to do all of that. So, you know, I'm being obedient, got my eyes closed, and I'm praying, like he said, because the souls, people are coming to the altar, people, lying, I mean, people just standing up and going and going. I finally did a little peek. I know the rapture ain't occurred, and I got left. <laughs> I look over, I see my mother coming down the main corridor. <laughs> At the name of Jesus. He preached Jesus unto them. And if you see the altar, there's some people believing God for their mamas. I understand. I know, I know. It was like when I got to the Lord, I want my whole family saved. Because this is just the bomb. We went to church and stuff like that. But going to church and going to Sunday school and, you know, doing the little Sunday school play and all that kind of stuff. You know, all that. That ain't mean nothing. We got baptized, me and my sister Angie Kim. We all had the same baptismal gown. We ain't know nothing about no Jesus, no nothing, but it was a cute thing to do. But once I came into the knowledge of the word, oh, this is serious business. I want my family saved. 
I want my brother saved. I want them to live. My sister's living strong for the Lord. Glory to God. Well, my mama say, my daddy already went here. He checked out and went to heaven. 1977. Glory to God. <laughs> um, but um, I wanted my mama say, and I know there's some people in here. I just feel the Holy Ghost. Amen. You believe in God for your mama, for your mama. People believe in God for their mama. God is no respecter of persons. He is no respecter of persons. He is no respecter of persons. We've already spoken to the blindness to be removed from the eyes that she will be able to see the glorious light of the gospel. There are other people in here the same way. Other people the same way. You believe in God for mama. The one that cares for you. One to watch over. Y'all know what I'm talking about. You know, daddies, we love daddies. I was a daddy girl too. My daddy went to heaven. I was a daddy girl. I was still a daddy girl. Now my daddy named Jesus. You know, my heavenly father. Still a daddy's girl. But mama, mama took care of me, I'm telling you. When daddy went to heaven, mama, t- mama stood up. She stood in that place and she took care of her three daughters and her son. My mama wasn't allowed to work. My father wouldn't let her work. She stayed home. When I would come home for lunch, I had food. Other kid had a bag. I, my mama said, you know, you come home. I would have hot meal on the tape. Mama took good care of us. I watched her take good care of my father. So I wanted my mama to be saved. I want my mama to give her life to the Lord. There's some other people in here. Other people believe in God for their family members. And right now, we in faith, we join our faith with you this morning. Glory to God. And we thank you, Father God, right now for the laborers coming across their pathway to share the good news of the gospel with them in the name and in the authority of Jesus. They will be bombarded with the word everywhere they go, everywhere they turn. Somebody's going to be talking to them about Jesus. Father, your word declares it's the goodness of God that will lead them to repent, change their mind and direction, and to turn unto you, Lord God. We declare it so corporately this morning in the name and in the authority of Jesus. Somebody on that, you believe in God for your family members, but you need to give God some praise for that one. Come on, sons and daughters. Come on, somebody. Grandchildren. This is a net. That's the God we serve. Not willing that any should perish, but that all come to repentance. That's the God that we serve. The Bible says, how can they hear without a preacher? Somebody got to come across their pathway. Somebody got to tell them about Jesus. Come on, somebody. I know, I know the feeling and I know the hurt in your heart. I know that. Glory to God. But God is faithful. God is faithful. I'm telling you, God is. And there are people sitting in here. They're believing God for. There are some people interceding for the island, but they're interceding for their neighborhood. Who praying for their neighborhood? Some people in here. I, I, I'm, I'm serious. You praying for your neighborhood. There were, um, Bill Winston tells a story of this woman, how she lived in a neighborhood where they sell, they sell crack and all that kind of stuff. It was rough, Gun, gunshots and all that kind of, that's all you're going to hear. Somebody running drugs, somebody doing this all the time. She refused to relocate. She stood in her authority. She threw a bloodline around that neighborhood. Called on the name of Jesus. 
And God starts supernaturally moving all them people out of the way. Supernaturally. Because she stood in her authority. A lot of time we quick to move out. How can the world, how can things happen in the world? Oh, let me, let me wait one second. Wait, wait. I have to count myself down. Come on. Oh, wow. I can't think of, I think it's Wesley, um, I can't think of, John Wesley said, it's, it, it seems that God can't do anything in the earth unless somebody prays. So unless God has a voice in the earth, crying out about the neighborhood, crying out about the people. Come on, somebody. Even if you don't live in a neighborhood like that, in St. Thomas, once in a while, you got to drive through something. I know I live up on the hill above um, uh, Silver Dollar, but when I go past Silver Dollar, I plead the blood. I don't care where Silver Dollar want to be, but you ain't going to be there no more. There's a church right there and a school my daughter attends. I got authority. So when I'm coming down the hill, I'm stretching my hand toward that business. I don't care how. I'm, I'm not the one. We're not the ones to tell how God how to do it. He just needs the voice. But he's able to get the job done. But I continually stretch my hands toward that place. Not in this neighborhood. Not where I have to drive. And then you always hear about somebody getting shot or somebody something and, and bullets blazing. And they even have the kids trained in the school that if something happened, they teach them how not. No. 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 Right. Somebody got to stand up and say no. no. This is not a plaything. Glory to God. God has given us authority. And he needs somebody that's going to cry out. Somebody that's going to say something in the name of Jesus. Let me share this story about Dad Hagen. Let me get there. Because, you know, I'll be talking, talking, talking. I'm going to get a text in a minute. Shut it down. Shut it down. No, I'm just playing. I'm just playing. Okay. I had this story from Dad Hagen. Um, Dad Hagen tells this story. Um, every, some, if you read his book, Other Order Yell, the Believer, you, you've heard it before. But I just want to read this. He said this. In 1952, the Lord Jesus Christ appeared to me in a vision and talked to me for about an hour and a half about the devil, demons, and demon possession. At the end of that vision, an evil spirit that looked like a little monkey or an elf ran between Jesus and me and spread something like a smoke screen or a dark cloud. So you got, he's having a vision. Jesus on the other side, he's right here. All of a sudden, this little monkey come between them, and he throws up this smoke screen. This is the vision. Then this demon began jumping up and down, crying in a shill, shill, uh, shrilling voice, yakety yak, yakety yak, yakety yak. I couldn't see Jesus or understand what he was saying. Through this entire experience, Jesus was teaching me something, and if you'll be attentive, you then he go on about that. He said, I couldn't understand why Jesus allowed the demon to make such a racket. I wonder why Jesus didn't rebuke the demon. Jesus didn't rebuke the demon. Oh, man, I lost my place. Wait, no, 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 no. Wait, one second, one second. Rebuke the demon so I could hear what he was saying. I waited a few moments, but Jesus didn't take any action against the demon. Jesus was still talking, but I couldn't understand a word he was saying. And I needed to because he was giving instructions concerning the devil, demons, and how to exercise authority. I thought to myself, doesn't the Lord know I'm not hearing what he wanted me to hear? I need to hear that. I'm missing it. I'm almost panicked. I became so desperate, I cried out, in the name of Jesus, you foul spirit, I command you to stop. The minute I said that the little demon hit the floor, like a sack of salt and the black cow disappeared the demon laid there trembling whimpering and whining like a whipped puppy he wouldn't look at me not not only shut up but get out of here in jesus name that's what dad hagen said he said i command you to run off the lord knew exactly what was in my mind i was thinking why didn't he do something about that why did he permit it 
Jesus looked at me and said, if you hadn't done something about that, I couldn't have. He said, that came as a real shock to me. I'm almost finished reading this. Jesus replied, not one single time in the New Testament is the church ever told to pray that God the Father or Jesus would do anything against the devil. People still pray that way. They want God to do something about the devil. In fact, to do so is to waste your time. The believer is told to do something about the devil. The reason is because you have the authority to do it. The church is not to pray to God the Father about the devil. The church is to exercise the authority that belongs to it. That is our assignment in the earth. People praying to God about moving, doing this and that. No, you speak to the circumstance. You speak to the situation. It releases God to operate on your behalf. Y'all hearing me this morning? Come on, somebody. Come on, somebody. Okay, let's go to Matthew chapter 8. I think this might be my last thing. Ooh, y'all know I like to talk. Okay, this is going to be my last thing. Glory to God. Let me get to Matthew chapter 8. Matthew, no. Let's go to, um, no, not Matthew. Let's go to Acts. They're going to be like, Lord. <laughs> Let's go to Acts chapter 3. Do that one. Acts chapter 3. Uh, da, 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 da. Yeah, Acts chapter 3, verse number 1. Okay. Let's see, let me see, let me see. Let me see, let me see, let me see. It says, now this. Now Peter and John went up to the, um, together in the temple at the hour of prayer, being the ninth hour. You have authority. I just heard God say that. Somebody needs to know that they have authority. Some people have been putting up with stuff they didn't need to put up with. You put up with stuff you don't have to put up with. And you've been just like Dad Hagen, wondering why. At a certain uh, at a certain. A certain man, lame from his mother's womb, was carried, whom they laid daily at the gate of the temple, which is called Beautiful, to ask alms of them that entered into the temple, who, seeing Peter and John about to go into the temple, asked an alms. So you got this man laying at the gate every day. They literally brought him to the gate, and his, every day this man would just begin to beg and beg and beg for what he needed. And it says, and Peter fastened his eyes upon him with John and said, look on us. Now, this man, he's doing what he normally do. He's begging. Peter and John come to the gate. They hear him and they respond to him. Peter and John say, look on us. Look on us. And he gave heed unto them, expecting to receive something of them. Then Peter said, silver and gold have I none, but such as I have give I thee. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. That man never thought that when he was begging that day, that his life would totally change. In an instant, glory to God. When Peter said, look on us, and he spoke the name, something miraculous happened in the body of that man, glory to God. Because of the authority, Peter was just operating in the authority that God has given to the entire body of Christ. Come on, somebody. And, you know, if you, if you read about Peter prior to this, you know, he was clowning and acting up and cussing and all that kind of stuff. He winds up in the upper room with everybody else. He staggers out into the street. He preaches a sermon. Over 3,000 people get saved and all that kind of stuff after this. Praise God. After this. Glory to God. But let me say this about the name. It says a name does not just identify or distinguish a person. It expresses the very nature of his being. The power of the person was present. The power of the person was present and available in the name of the person. Peter does not just ask Jesus to heal him, but pronounces over the crippled beggar the name of Jesus, thereby releasing the power of Jesus to operate in that man's body. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? Now go to Isaiah. Do this. I said that was the last one, but that ain't the last one. Isaiah 35, 4 through 6. We got authority. We got authority. So we know after the man, he received, after, after G, uh, Peter spoke the word, the Bible says in verse number seven, don't, don't go, just stay right there for me. The Bible says in verse number seven that um, he took him by the hand and lifted him up and immediately the guy got strength in his feet and his ankle and all that kind of stuff. And the Bible said that he was leaping, stood up leaping and walking and entered in the temple, praising God and all that kind of stuff. This was already prophesied by the prophet Isaiah in verse number 35. When I found this last night, boy, I tell you, I lit up. I'm telling you, this was already prophesied about what Jesus would do. It says here, verse number four, say to them that are of a fearful heart, be strong, fear not. If you are of a fearful heart this morning, be strong. Yeah. 
and fear not. Behold, your God will come with vengeance, even God with recompense. He will come and save you. It says, then the eyes of the blind shall be open. Then Jesus opened the eyes of the blind and the ears of the deaf shall be unstopped. Then Jesus opened the ears of the deaf. Then shall the lame man leap as a heart. Y'all know what a heart is, a deer. Where's she at? Y'all see that on screen? Yeah. Then shall a lame man leap as a heart. This man got up leaping and jumping. He was crippled from his mother womb. And he got up leaping. And y'all ain't catching that. Because y'all look like a cow at a new gate. Like what I do. Okay. This was prophesied. By Isaiah. Then shall a lame man leap as a heart. And the tongue of the dumb sing. Didn't we see this in the ministry of Jesus? And all that Jesus did. We have the same authority. We have the same power. To walk in it. Glory to God. Blind eyes seeing. Deaf ears hearing. Lame walking, glory to God. Those not able to speak, their, their tongues be loose so that they can. We have the same authority, the same power that Jesus has. And God expects us to exercise and to walk in that authority in this earth. Come on, somebody. So we got some believers in here. Remember we read in Mark chapter 16, he said, in my name. You ain't doing this in your own name. You ain't doing this by your own might and your own power. But in his name, you have authority to go through your neighborhood. In his name, glory to God. When you're standing in the grocery store and somebody talking about they sick. In his name. You can lay hands on the sick and they will recover. In his name, glory to God. You can cast out devil. In his name. Come on, somebody. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Glory to God. In the name of Jesus. Come on, you got power. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. And there are some people in here got challenges in their body today. You've heard the word of the Lord regarding that in that name, healing will manifest in your body. Glory to God. In, in the story in the book of Matthew chapter 18 talked about the centurion soldier and how he came to Jesus because the servant was at a point of death and he said Jesus you ain't got to come to my house you ain't got to come to my house I ain't got to see you I ain't got to hear you because he if you read it from the book of read Matthew and Luke together you got to read the um, gospels together to get the full picture we know ain't no Roman centurion just step up to Jesus like that he sent representatives if you look in the book of Luke he said representatives. But he, he's like, I ain't got to see it. I ain't got to hear it. You ain't even got to come to my door. But speak the word only and my servant shall be made whole. Glory to God. Well, you have heard the word this morning. Glory to God. And the healing power of God is available in this room right now. Glory to God. And I'm telling you, I'm telling you, get ready, get ready, get ready this morning. Glory to God. Hey, Jesus is here to deliver. Jesus is here to heal. Jesus is here to set free. So if that's you, don't delay. Come down to this altar. This Glory to God. Glory to God. So you coming down here in faith, believe in God.
Spirit of the Lord is there is freedom. I'm 
Thank you.